Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Thanks for joining us for another Sunday edition of the BTSC broadcast, We Run the North. I'm your host from the Know It All podcast, guest contributor to the Behind the Steel Curtain podcast network. My name is Kevin Tate, and with me today I got the homies. The Bingo, B Dirt, what's up, man? What's going on, man? How's it doing? Going pretty good, man. Can't complain. Just another Sunday. It's raining down here in the DMV area. I don't know what the weather's like there up in Pittsburgh. Scattered showers. Okay, so that's the same thing. And we, we got our boy Pay, our resident substitute, Baltimore Raven. Not fan, but we'll call him a person of, 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 of knowledge. So, you know, what's up, Pay? How you doing, man? I'm well, man. How's it going over there? It's going pretty good here, man. It's like I told B. Dirt, man. Just a, just another another nice, relaxing Sunday. Kind of overcast and rainy out. I actually got a actually got a new a new puppy yesterday. I got a, a French bulldog back in January. I named him Harlem. And me and the wife and I went and got another French bulldog pup yesterday. He's two months old. Harlem is eight months old. His name is Bronx. We got him yesterday morning about 10, 11 o'clock and. My household has been hectic since then. <laughs> Those are children. I, for, I, I got for a, another two years, my friend. <laughs> I got a puppy not too long ago, and it, it was like a child. Uh, I was not prepared for that. So uh, I, I, I wish all the luck to. It is. It is. You're right, man. These these jokers got you know got got a pen and got got crates and stuff, and they pull all their toys out in the middle of the floor and. They don't play with the toy they pull out. They just go pull out the next one. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Um, all, 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 the best advice I can give you, schedule. <laughs> best advice I can give you, put them on a schedule, and that'll make your life a lot easier. Yeah, I'm trying to. And I, I was doing that. I'm doing that with the, with doing it with the first one. It's just like the second one throws like a, a monkey wrench in the whole thing. But, you know, enough, enough of the dog talk. We'll talk about. The, the puppies, the Cleveland Browns, that dog talk. Uh, but, you know, so today's show, guys, we're just going to, you know, kind of kind of have an open dialogue amongst the three of us. Um, got some notes here. We're going to talk about uh, camp battles, week one standouts, uh, and different different questions. Like one of them is to, when you update the Deshaun Watson latest. Not that I know. I don't know the NFL is letting anybody know anything about that. Uh, like question for, for you guys is, Joe Burrow, legit MVP candidate. Can TJ Watt go back to back in DPOY? And will Lamar Rose, Lamar Jackson get paid? You know, just different questions. So how we going how we're gonna do this, we're gonna just do a round robin. I'm gonna ask a question of B Dirt about the Bengals. Then pay that. You can ask a question about the Bengals, then we'll we'll you know we'll we'll turn the tables. Then then we can ask Payday a question about the Ravens and so forth. We'll just go like that. So Anybody in the live chat got any comments or questions? Put them up there. Good to see you guys out there. I see we got our we got our regular regular homie George Teston. What's up, GT man? Good to see you out here, man. Kathy Ford. Hey, how are you, Kathy? Good to see you too. Um, Jared Devil. He's in there a lot. Jared Devil. AJC. AJC. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Let's get started, guys. I mean, what do we think? Uh, we'll go to you first, B. Dirt. I got some, guess I got a quick question, man. What's up? What's up with Joe Burrow and his injury, and what's the status on that thing, man? Uh, pretty simple procedure: appendicitis. Uh, had his appendix removed. Everything went really smooth. Uh, you know, initial reports were they're going to wait a day or two to do it, uh, but I think the doctor squeezed him in a little earlier. Uh, but everything went well, and uh, just I mean, it, no no issue whatsoever, really. When, when, when are you anticipating him back? Will it be before preseason is up? Is he oh, preseason games? The last game, maybe. The yeah, I, I think they'll give him some reps, um, especially since you know there's some new offensive line pieces, and I think you know they need to get some good continuity with those guys. So I anticipate him playing a little bit in the preseason. Um, but, you know, I the Bengals are definitely going to slowly bring him back. But I have a feeling – I mean, you got to think, the guy's 25 years old. 
he's going to be back in a week or two. One, or, you know, another week he's going to want to go full speed, but they're just going to kind of hold him back, I think, a little bit. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Starfania Bell on uh, ESPN's fantasy football show said that they don't, she doesn't believe that the appendix, uh, appendicitis for burrow should take longer than three to five uh three to five weeks just based on how you know science has progressed in that area so mm-hmm. if we let's say if we extrapolate that and believe that to be the case can we put burrow in the front lot in the in front as the front runner for the mvp discussion coming out of this division um i i, I think he'll be in that I think he's going to be in that top five tier because if you look, even even with some of the things that we've done uh, with the line, O-line, I think we'll have more. Um, I think we'll do a little more in the running game. I think we'll, we'll kind of rely a little more heavily on that. Um, but I still, I, I mean, as far as if Joe, Joe Burrow is healthy, I expect him to be uh, – I expect him to always be in a top ten – uh, in, in MVP candidates. I think he's that kind of talent. I think he's got that kind of machismo. And I think um, we're going to scheme our team around him that well, in that way. Uh, it's just going to be a heavy focus. Um, this year, I, I, I mean, it depends on how that line gels, but I think he could do, I think he'd be in the top five candidates right now. Preseason, that's where I would put him. One thing about Burrow, he's got machismo by the Whew. dozen. Um wow. Yeah, um, I, I I can't disagree with anything you said. They've they signed four offensive linemen this this off season. They, that was definitely their area of weakness going into last season. They still made it to the Super Bowl, and um, so yeah, they're they're definitely trying to you know make sure that he's got the best best opportunity to make a, a MVP push as well as continuing their lead in the division. So does. They do have four brand new offensive linemen this year, four new starters. Yeah, and three of them are plug and play um, uh, with Kappa, Karos, um, and Collins. Um, but there's going to be some. Kappa, Kappa's from Tampa Bay. Collins is from Dallas. Karos was, um, I think he spent one year in Miami, but he was, uh, he really cut his teeth in New England. Okay. He was there with the last year with Brady. Uh, so so I think, you know, we got center, we got right guard, we got left tackle. I think you're going to see some left guard seems to be where you're going to have a little competition on our team. Um, but everything else, I think it's plug and play with the new guys. Um, and, I like, it, you know, one of the things I was going to talk about um, in the Bengals repeat section kind of we talked about, uh, 52% of the times that we handed the ball off to a running back, they got hit before the line of scrimmage. Wrap your head around that. If you handed the ball to a running back, more times than not, they got hit in the backfield. So no. I don't, I, we didn't add a, like three all pros to our line, but we added guys that also have mean streaks, also like move people. So I expect, I mean, I'm, I'm very interested to see what Mixon does, because he's never been able to get to the line of scrimmage consistently without getting hit. So I'm very interested to see what he does with with a, a, a better line. Well, it sounds it sounds like we're feeling the same way because trust me, I as a fan and Najee Harris as a running back experienced that same thing last year. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's third and short, and you know. It, you have third and one, two yards, and your your best option is to pass it when you have Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon, or Najee Harris in the backfield. That's absurd. You know, what I mean, that should be you should be able to get a yard there. Right. Okay. So that's two questions you answered for us about the Bengals. Now we can go ahead and go to payday about the, the Ravens. So you got you got any questions for him, Blue Dirt? Yeah. Um, do you have any extra defensive linemen that you can uh, that you're going to cut that we can pick up at the end of this battle here, training camp? 
actually. Um, there is um, uh, a, a few, well, you know, they added to the defensive lineman and, and, and the defensive front in the draft. Um, so, unfortunately, not to my knowledge, they'll be cutting anybody for, for the ops to get. Um, they will – it's going to still be their their strong suit of the team. Uh, their front seven with a couple of you know guys coming in the wings, they're going to be very tough this year. Do do not expect that to be a, a let up. Okay, um, there's a question, B. Durham. Guess it's about Collins for the Bengals. Is that yeah. Smith? And well, he 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 was sitting out beginning of camp, right? Is he still out? Yeah, uh, he is. He's working out, but not on the uh, seven on seven drills, eleven on eleven drills. So uh, he's there doing some workouts. He's on the. He's got the. Uh, um, uh, it was a non football related injury. Uh, essentially, uh, from what I'm hearing leaked out, is he's got a sore back. Um, I think if we were in season, he'd probably push through and play if it was an important game. You know what I mean? That's. That's what I'm hearing right now coming out of camp. Okay. Well, makes sense. Um, well, I got a question, man. So we know the Ravens are, are predominantly a run-heavy team, multiple tight end sets. They traded Hollywood Brown. Uh, Sammy Watkins is gone. So my question about the Ravens is about their receivers. I mean, I read some 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 blogging, some blogger stuff on – the Ravens, it says Lamar Jackson is trying to – they're working really hard in camp to develop a rapport between him and, and Bateman, last year's rookie from Minnesota, yeah, and uh, the receiver Duvernay. Like, I mean, are we anticipating these guys stepping up in with their production to, to you know, out outproduce what Hollywood Brown and Watkins and – they even lost Miles Boykins, who's now on the Steelers, so – well, what are we expecting from the, the Ravens receivers? Um, well, yeah, they that, that is the plan. Uh, Dune or Bateman will be slot in to be the, the Marcus Brown, the Hollywood Brown replacement. Um, Hollywood was traded away to Arizona. Some say because of dissatisfaction with his role here in, uh, in Baltimore, or just because you know Arizona, you know, was over a barrel with their situation and just overpaid for them. Whether the case, what what they're going to do now is going to um, move on to move on to what we got going on with Bateman and and Duvernay. I kind of think that what Bateman's going to end up winning that number one um, number one uh, uh, receiver uh, position. I think his uh, I think his uh, rep- repertoire with uh, Lamar so far has been more promising than what Duvernay's been showing. But you know, it's still early. We can still, you know, it, it can change in the next three weeks. Um, as I said last week, as long as Mark Andrews is still is still functioning and healthy, this team is this team's offense is not going to have too much of a uh, uh, too much of a drop off from where it was at its peak two years two seasons ago. Um, J.K. is out; he might not be back before November. But they brought in Mike Davis from Atlanta, who's very, who's a very even though he's long in the tooth, he's very uh, talented. And he was good. He was he he was with the Panthers last year, though, right? Mike, yeah, you're right, right. No, no, yeah. no. He was with he was in Atlanta last year. He was he was brought into Atlanta to be their focal. He, he came to, from Carolina to Atlanta. Correct. Yeah, he okay. uh, he, uh, he didn't have the season he wanted to last year, but he's 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 a he's a dual threat back. Um, he's a little older, but you don't you don't need the way we do things at Baltimore. You don't need you don't need him to be an every down type guy. We've got. They've got functions to go at every level. Um, well, yeah, so they have no, no they one have, gets overworked. They have Gus Edwards coming back. Mm-hmm. They have Gus. you said they, they have Davis. They have the kid from uh, he played at Oklahoma State. I, what's his name? Kind of a little third down back, kind of fast. I can I can picture him. I can't remember his name. Barry Sanders. That's not it. Say it that's again. All I, uh, Barry Sanders. All I can think of it. Oklahoma Barry State Sanders. running. Oklahoma well, right State uh, running back. I'm I'm Barry Sanders. That's it all day. Well, no, they 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 had to do Chuba Hubbard. I know him. He plays for the Carolina now too. Um, as it Tyler, you're not talking about Tyler, right? Um, I'm not too sure who, who Oklahoma State you're, you're referring to, but they they've got they've got depth. 
thing with Baltimore just, right now. Justice they, they Hill. Got a lot of Justice Hill. Justice Hill. Justice, Justice Hill. Hill. Yeah. Um, again, that's another. That's a fourth running back. We got uh, Gus, Mike, J.K. is on on the way back at some point this uh, this season. Justice Hill, Tyler Batty. It's it's depth up and down, up and down the way in Baltimore. Um, Duvernay, Bateman, uh, Mike, Mark Andrews. It's going to be. It's going to be. Is a t- is Tavis Murray still in uh, still in town? He's a free, um, he's a free agent. He's not in, he's not technically in he, Baltimore. The the talk is he might even be uh they might even uh, look to bring him back. So Baltimore's their offense is going to be it's going to be a work in progress. However, it is not going to be something that uh under construction if if that if 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 that uh saying makes any sense. Um it does. If they're healthy, if they're healthy, you know, last last season got derailed by poor health. But if they're healthy, you know, look look for Baltimore's offense to look more like a you know more in the top top half of the of the seat of the league. Wow, top half of the league. Well, you know what they they they've been top three in scoring the past three years. So I can I can buy into that now. Now that you now that you say it like that, I mean, you know, you just you just don't think of them like that because they're not an explosive passing offense, but. When it comes to doing what you want offense to do, and that's put points on the board, they're pretty good at that. Well, every time they get past, uh, you know, midfield, they, they got a field goal, right? That's true. Justin, Justin that's Tucker puts it in from that's anywhere. That's correctly. That's they're, they're never out. They're never out of scoring, uh, um, scoring threat. Every like you said, you get that field, they can come out of that possession with some points. They're never going to like. Okay, look. Um, we're going, to, we're going to go for it on fourth and short here, even though we're on the 47 or something like uh, or something in that situation. Some some teams may, you know, OK, this is a punting situation because we don't we don't believe we have the horses. Baltimore, on the other hand, they got, you know, the ultimate Swiss Army knife at quarterback. They've got, you know, plenty of bruises coming out of the backfield. They got a tight end that's sure handed is all all get out. And we got the goat with the foot. Uh, the foot goat. So <laughs> the foot every, goat. Possess, every, possess, every possession can end in points. So yeah, I stand by I stand by that assertion that if they if they got the health, they can be a t- top half the team, top half league of offense. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. I just had to look at it in a in a different light. I mean, it's not about the passing offense or Lamar Jackson passing from the pocket. It's about putting points on the board. Be that Tucker, be that the defense. At the end of the day, the Ravens have a pretty high score on Sundays. You know. But okay, so real quick, I'm going to ask a couple questions to each of you. What you think about? Well, well, as, as you guys can see, we typically have our resident Cleveland Browns guy, Mike here, and he's not here today. Uh, but so we're just going to, you know, kind of kind of give our takes on what we think we, about these Brown questions. And my first question is going to be the payday, real quick. And that's and this I guess is not a question. This is what guess what what you've heard. What's the what's the latest on the Deshaun Watson situation, man? It's still, you know, news comes out very slowly out out of that situation, um, and, and that's just the way it is for these type of legal, you know, situations. Um, the uh, the league, a, a, as has been, you know, thought of, the league wants an indefinite uh, suspension for him. Hey man, uh, hey man, hey man, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just this just hit me, man. Anybody ever told you, man? You look like Najee Harris. No. <laughs> no one's ever told me that. Hey, um, hey live chat. Don't pay kind of favor. Not, well, Najee kind of favors him because Najee, you're older than Najee. I know that. Yeah, so I yeah. guess he would kind of favor you. But there is some resemblance there. But I'm sorry. Go ahead with your Deshaun Watson take about his, his, his you know, upcoming potential suspension. Oh. Hopefully, you know, if if that is the case that we favor a little bit, you know, I wouldn't be too upset if they make a mistake and send his check my way. Um, <laughs> um, as far as as far as Deshaun Watson's situation is going, you know, the league has has a uh, it, it has been uh, it has kind, of, kinda. kind of kind of it has <laughs> been kind of uh, thought of that uh, the league wants something to be done indefinite indefinitely, and uh, they're fighting back against that. If that to be true, that can probably spill over into the, into the season because you're gonna have to get that past the legal ways. Um, <laughs> we can get that past the legal uh, past the legal teams, but um, it's, I mean, so it's it basically it basically any uh, and, and 
is in the weight and the holding pattern as far as that goes. So how does that play off to on the field? It's still Jacoby as QB one and by a mile. Um, Jacoby, Jacoby is probably even though we don't think much of him as far as uh, you know top thirty two quarterback in the league, he's probably one of the better backups in the league still. Um, he's been that way for since New England. Um, Brissett Br- Br- is is a good backup. Yeah, I I, I kind of think that's why they they they've held on to him, and I think you know signing Josh Rosen was just more for depth. I can't imagine Josh Rosen is, it has any type of um, uh, foothold or stake into that uh, starting quarterback. Oh, uh, not, not 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 at all as a starter. I mean, I guess my overall question, be dirt. What do you think? Can he make the fifty three? Josh Rosen. I mean. They, they, it depends if they want three quarterbacks, right? Deshaun Watson suspended for eight games. Yeah, you got I think he's set, You got Josh Dobbs. I mean, and you got Rosen. The minute Deshaun Watson come back, Rosen's out of there, right? Go. Oh, yep. I, 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 that's what I think is going to happen. Um, I, I, I don't see any way that we're talking about less than eight games um, for Watson. I, Watson's blows my mind right now. Have you guys seen this TikTok? With the uh, uh, Mia Khalifa, um, I seen it. Uh, I mean, that guy's got I don't a porn get too, star I don't, I don't, I don't, playing Nerf yeah, basketball uh, uh, with him in a maid's outfit while he's going through all this stuff. Like, you can't put that in public, man. That's recent. That's recent. I hadn't seen it. Okay, I hadn't heard about it. <laughs> wow. The, the Sean, the 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 Sean Watson's his 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 team. His team has been failing the. <laughs> However, PR there's nothing team. wrong. His PR team, had, had his, PR like, team ah! has been has been pretty bad. Um, mm. As as one person on uh, uh, just said, he is, um, you know, he just doesn't he just doesn't know when to just you know just fade to black and just let everything be, you know, be chill for a minute. Um, as far as I mean, have I don't want to get media too far anywhere right now. None of it. Just stay off of it completely. Yeah. Um, that would that would be my advice to him. But again, you know, I'm not I'm not in that room with him. But um, <laughs> I don't want to be any in any room with him. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know what? As far as uh, how that goes, you know, he's got to he's got to see how it goes. I don't I don't I don't want to speculate on what type of uh, discipline will be handed down by the league. Um, I don't know if we want to talk about that too far into it, but. Um, yeah, it, it's more than likely going to be something that's going to take the Browns out of any cons- any serious contention for the division. Um, just just even even as we believe Jacoby is a, a, a serviceable quarterback, with no run for as B. Dirt said, eight plus games, they're, they're going to be they're going to be pretty much looking playing for the draft. Um, Wow, that bad? Yeah, oh, oh. I mean, Jacoby is back, and you have two two Bulldogs coming out the backfield. You got Amari Cooper as your as your wide receiver one, and and, and um Hayden, uh, not Hayden Hurst. I don't know why I was about to say his name, but uh, that's, we got him, and and that's pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's they got, over they there. Got, they, um, they, 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 they got in Joku in tight ends. That what you think about? Right. They got that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking about. Joku. Um, their office doesn't doesn't really scream as like, you know, something um project to be something that's gonna win a lot of games. You know what but I mean? But I think I think at least I, in I, the I, I think, half of the season. I think the Browns are anticipating on having a top ten defense this year. I agree. Oh, I think they will be, but you know the just the way. Even even though I'm, I'm a firm believer in defense wins games, defense wins championships. Just the way the game's played now, the defense is only do so much as far as on a week to week basis. There and you know that's just the way the game is. Your quarterback factors in a lot. You got Jacoby as, as your starting guy at quarterback. You got Nick Chubb, who's as great as he is, is kind of you know. Nick, uh, nicked up to be going to miss some games. Then you got Kareem Hunt, and you got the quarterback. Uh, you got the tight end Joku, who has failed to show any type of uh, um, semblance of what he was, what he did in Miami. Um, and Mari Cooper, who is Miami, the Hurricanes, the Hurricanes, correct? They um, um 
They 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 gave him the bag though. They gave him the bag. Uh, I wouldn't have done it. He hasn't he hasn't shown that he you know should have uh, gotten paid to that extent. Um, but you know credit to him. I just don't I just don't see it. I think they're going to be. If if we were to if we were to assume eight game suspension for Deshaun, I would be blown away if they won half of the games if they that they that so, he's missing. So here's where I think um, where I have the question about it is the way their team set up without Deshaun Watson, um, uh, they could win some ugly games. They got to make it an ugly game, right? They got to run the ball, control the ball, and rely heavily on their defense. But they've got a coach in Stefanski who's smarter as an offensive mind than everybody, at least in his own mind. So how long can he just turn around and hand a ball off to those two studs in the backfield he's, he's, and be happy with it? He's pretty good. He got uh, Kirk Cousins to an NFC Championship game, didn't he, as offensive coordinator? I, listen, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, is if you have that genius as an offensive mind, how often are you going to just turn around – and hand a ball off forty times a game. Well, I think, I think I think I think I think it depends on 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 the ego of the OC, right? If he if he doesn't have a big ego and he wants to win the game, you're gonna do whatever it takes to win the game. If you want to kind of get credit and kind of shine, like oh, I can call plays and win with Jacoby Brissett, then that might not be the right road to go down. Go ahead. And I, I think when your head coach is that offensive mind too, and now you got the OC, and now. You don't have anybody I, I, like controlling that conversation and saying, no, 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 no. I just don't think he hits the brakes there. I think he looks at it as just what you said. I made this guy go to the NFC Championship game. I could take Jacoby Brissett, and we can have a great offense. In this, in this division, uh, with Baltimore's defense, Cincinnati's defense, Pittsburgh's defense, and Cleveland's defense, all, all these teams got are projecting to have a great defensive defensive uh, squads this year. Baltimore is going to, their defense is going to have to play at a, at so above his head just to be competitive um, week in and week out. And their offense is already, like I said, no one's again, as, as, as fine as you may be with Jacoby, none of these defenses are super worried, too worried about what he's got going on. Throwing to Amari Cooper and uh, David Nujoku, that, that doesn't really strike fear in the hearts of, you know, uh, a modern, uh, you know, a modern defense as of right now. I mean, I mean, if they still had OB, OBJ, maybe um, you might be able to, uh, you know, pl- uh, play some backfield and, games. And and, but, and, 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 and and that was my take when, when we were talking about last week, I believe. I said that the, the receiver room was, was more scary with OBJ and Jarvis Landry than it is with uh, Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones. DPJ. Yeah. D- oh, yeah. You're, you're a Michigan guy. No wonder you know a nickname for him. Nobody else does. <laughs> but uh, last la- last question on Cleveland. What, what do you see the role? Do you think uh, you guys think Kareem Hunt is trade bait? Or do you think he'll just share carries with Nick Chubb? And, because they re-signed Dearness Johnson, the third string back who filled in admirably last year. And Kareem Hunt, I believe, is making like eight million a year, and he'll probably—I he, think this is last year—he'll want to get paid and be up for an extension. But does Cleveland trade him? So he's—he's he's an unrestricted free agent, right? After the end of the year, he's only making six million dollars this year. Six million. So, so you know, if they're two and six, the first eight games, I think he's trade bait. Um, you need two two running backs in today's NFL. You need a, a, a solid second running back. He's above solid, uh, but I think that if they can get a second, a third round, um, something along those lines for him, I think you at that point in time have to move off of him. Uh, you're not going to want to pay him and bring somebody in on a rookie deal. Uh, there's a lot. If you look. In running back history, there's a lot of guys in the third round that are really good. So if you can use a third round pick, get you a solid second running back for Chubb, I think that's the best way for them to go. Get a little more value uh, out of that trade. Um, it makes 
it makes all the sense in the world that uh, Cleveland and uh, Kareem have an amicable, amicable split after the season, if not during the season. Um, Kareem has, has done a lot to uh, reshape his uh, his image in Cleveland, and I'm, I'm and he said he's fortunate for that. Um, he's still in the prime of his career and prime of his uh, his youth. He can do a lot for somebody. He can get paid a lot. He can do a lot for, as a feature back and, and it, so any other team in the league. Um, and as and as B. Dirt mentioned, Dearness Johnson has showed proved a lot in uh, in both his uh, Kareem's absence and Nick Chubb's absence last year. But that uh, three game what was it is a two or three week uh, uh, stint of um, just amazing running back play when no one was no one was uh, ex- expecting it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense on both on both from both angles from both camps. Yeah. Now, now after five and three. Way. You gotta start thinking about leaving him there, right? I'm, I'm almost don't think no. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and running and in the, the league it is today, running backs come in a dime a dozen. As you just said, you can find a running back starting running back in the third round, and um, you can get you can get that if you can if you I mean you can be five and three with any running back. You can five and three with Cream Hunt, you can be five and three with Dearness Johnson back there. Um, so no, and, and you know, and to further and to further uh, go further into that. I would eat a shoe if they're if they have five wins before the the buy. I'm I'm <laughs> almost I'm almost confident they will have there will be a two win team coming going into week nine. Almost confident. What, I, I almost, what's the time right here? What's the time on this? We need to stop this at thirty one <laughs> time twenty five. Time stamp. Eat a shoe. <laughs> Uh, I, I, who knew? You just turned me into a Browns fan for the first half of the year. <laughs> uh, that was that was uh, Evan Giles uh, gave you a shout out there too. Without uh, Tate, you wrote a really good piece uh, on uh, should they pay uh, Deontay Johnson. That was uh, uh, a pretty good piece you wrote there for the Behind the Steel Curtain. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. that. Was my uh, first. First article, first editorial piece. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll be contributing some more, but that was my first one. So thanks for checking it out. And yeah, Evan, check check that article out. I'm going to talk about it in a second here too, but check out the article, man. I kind of go do a deep dive into it. But uh, all right, so you got you guys turn. Go ahead and 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 pepper me with some Steeler questions. This this, this, this 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 is what the people have been waiting on. Yeah, this is a this is a very black and gold black and gold room. I got one for that everybody wants to hear. TJ Watt, he's gonna go back to back DPOY. Now, um, according to BG uh, uh, MGM uh, um, sports book, they've got Miles Garrett plus six hundred favorite to go win D- defensive player of the year this year. Uh, TJ Watt has the second best odds at six plus six fifty. What you think, man? They can go they can go again. Well. It doesn't surprise me. I mean, I don't know the national media take the, uh, you know, that whole, that whole public, that public space for, for sports, sports, you know, talk. They had, well, even Madden had Miles Garrett at 99 and TJ Watt at 96. What kind of sense does that make? Right. I mean, but I mean, I would I'll, I'll always have Aaron Donald at the top as number one, always for the past five years. And T.J. Watt is my number two. Well, Miles Garrett is capable. So I, the question I think the question is, can T.J. Watt do it? I think he can. I think he'll be. I think he'll be uh, pushing to break his own sack record again this year. I mean, with the additions of of Larry Ogunjobi, uh, we got Cam Hayward back. I like uh, our our defensive tackle Tyson Alualu back, but they also have. Uh, What's the kid's name? Uh, Montrevious Adams. I like him in the in the middle as a pass rusher. So just the, the defensive line, Highsmith, another year uh, to kind of to kind of progress and get a little better with with uh, Miles Jack. And somebody asked a question about Miles Jack. We'll, we'll come to that too. Uh, with Miles Jack and Devin Bush in the middle, I mean, I think he he'll, he'll be open to do a lot of things. Yesterday in camp, he had a a, a pick six. He picked Mitch Trubisky. We don't want to hear that, but we do like to hear PJ TJ Watt got a pick six. So kind of like a catch twenty two there. He picked off Mitch, but TJ Watt picked it off and ran it back. So that's a good thing, but it's a bad thing too. 
But so to answer the question, I think TJ can repeat. I have to put him up there in the, in the top three, like I said. I mean, because I think the guys, they, they, get, the, they get the accolades. If I'm guessing the top five, Aaron, Donald, Miles, Gary, TJ Watt, Michael Parsons, and you pick the fifth guy. I don't know. But I think those are four of the top five, and I think he'll be in that discussion. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think he's one of those guys that if he's healthy, that, that a lot like I said with Burrow, um, if TJ Watt's healthy, I expect him to be in the top five of that conversation going forward. Uh, now, I actually think I actually think T's better than all those guys. You know, in 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 a sense of um, standalone, you know, plays that elevate you to this type of uh, uh, accolade. You know, you know, no disrespect to Aaron Donald, no disrespect to Miles Garrett. Those are great players. They do they do things that don't even show up on the stat chart. That uh that um, elementary team to win. However, TJ Watt jumps off the screen. He's one of those guys who, you know, he's last last season when he, you it's know, different. When, he, when, he, when, he, when he, he definitely different. That is exactly the way you want to yeah, describe yeah, yeah. him. He, he, he made clutch defensive plays to win, like, send, send picks. Pittsburgh had no business having a winning record last season. I think TJ, TJ, um, just him by himself it to three wins. Uh, there was that uh, I forget who you I forget who Pittsburgh was playing. They uh, were they playing. Were at, he 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 saved the game against Seattle and Seattle. Teddy. Uh, uh, not Teddy Bridgewater, the other guy from West Virginia. Gene. Uh, uh, Geno Smith. Geno Smith. Gino, yeah. Right. 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 Uh, yeah. He got yeah. three. He he put three wins on the board for them by the, by himself. I don't think my and again no disrespect to MG. MG is a great athlete. But <laughs> T.J. Watt put the team on his back, and he's and you know I'm not a Pittsburgh truther. I think they're still they're just still they're, they're, they might be a step better than they were last season because you know they were dragging Ben Ben the, the casket of Ben for most of the season. Um, T.J. Watt's going to he's 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 shown it. He's done it. He you know he can carry the team on his back and lead them to win. I don't I don't believe MG can do it. I do believe Aaron Donald can do that, but he doesn't have to. He's got a, he's got he's got the troops around him, you know. So again, it's not so necessarily it's not necessarily a conversation about who's better, you know, who's better, uh, uh, who's a better player, but who can show it better in the in the in the in the sense that you know of plays that, st- that jump off the screen. And TJ's done it. He would get my pick as, as number one headed into the season as a uh, defensive player. It does. Of the year. It, it it does look different, and I mean, I think it's because it's just. It's just his motor, man. It's his motor. I mean, you know, you know how some guys just play football different. TJ Watt yeah. plays football different. And no one, no one, none of the other two guys I just mentioned, uh, uh Garrett or Don- Donald, no disrespect to their uh no disrespect to their teammates, but they don't play next to Cam. Play next to anybody who's anything like Cam Hayward. Cam Hayward allows TJ to be different because you know, if you put too much, you put too much of uh, 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 attention to TJ. Cam is gonna be in your backfield creating all type of havoc. You can't even just, you can't just assign a double thing to him either. You gotta, you know, uh, I don't want to back on the Browns, but no way the Browns can, with their with their limited offense can can have any type of uh, success this season. You, you got too much, too many dogs, too many dogs in, in, in this division. And so, front so, seven. Some, somebody said I can I can see Baker and the Panthers beating Browns that oh the Browns that opening game. That's who they play. Yeah. Baker plays I think, the Browns. I think they start to see a one and four. Luckily they start the season one and four. Baker I, Baker's gonna win that win win that spot. When when that spot is gonna come they're gonna they're gonna come back to Cleveland. Well, I don't know if they're playing in Cleveland or not, but he's gonna be Cleveland week one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to say that, you know. All right, B. Dirt. What's your what, what, what's your Steelers question, man? My question is, and uh, this is going to be an anti-Watt question. Take Watt out of the equation. Who is maybe the unsung, um, most important player on your defense for defensive improvement? I'm not talking about your your all pros. But who's that? Who's that other player other than a, a TJ, a Minka, or Cam 
it's the most important player on your defense as far as them making large strides. It has to be. It has to be Devin Bush, man. I mean, people are really down on Devin Bush. And for to me, I understand he played terrible last year, but his terrible play, but he we're down on him for no other reason than being injured. I mean, we think about his rookie year, think about his second year, he's having a great season, and he got injured towards ACL against the Cleveland Browns. And he came back at the beginning of last year, came back in Trent and Trent. In camp last year, he was more uh, rehabilitating than just practicing football. You know what I mean? I mean, so I think we'll get a, a huge jump from him, hopefully. I mean, not a whole lot out of camp about him. They've been rotating him and Miles Jack with Robert Spillane. But I think when, when, when the season starts, it'll be Devin Bush is who I expect to – the biggest jump from. I think Miles Jack will come in and be good, but but Miles Jack wasn't there last year, so a jump from him will be being better than how than what he was in Jacksonville last year. So my answer to that question is Devin Bush. Yeah, that's a good one. Any <laughs> any follow up or do you guys think anybody else? Um yeah Miles Jack that's that's really interesting that you all end up, you know, picking him off. Um, yeah, Steelers going to have. It, 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 is it possible? This, this is a this is a side aside from just a personal Steeler question. Is it possible every team in this in this division is top twelve defensively? I think I think that's a possibility. I think that's a possibility. Um, the Ravens are always good. The Browns have good talent. They get Delpit back. You get uh you get the kid oh 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 Okusamora from Notre Dame with a year under his belt and healthy. Um yeah. I think we're the only question there. Yeah, far, far, far as top twelve. I mean, I, you you would be all right. I would with, if you if you said what well, what did you put the over under at on the Bengals defense, I would say probably 18. I think we're below below 50%. Um, I'm, I'm rooting for us not to be there, uh, but I have some questions on our defense. Um, you, you know, we've got one guy, B.J. Hill, with us losing uh, Ovin Joby to, to the Steelers. we got one guy, B.J. Hill, that weighs over 287 pounds. So we got, I think We're going to face some pretty good running teams in our division. So, you know, I'd like to see us. That's the reason why I kind of asked you earlier, Pay, if we, we, if you had any extra defensive linemen in, in, uh, in Baltimore, we could sign because I'd like to get another three hundred and twenty pound uh, plug in there. I mean, running a, you know, four three, you don't need that three fifty pound anchor, but I'd still like to be able to put some more meat now. We do have a lot of guys that are – it almost looks like we're typecasting on our defensive line. Almost everybody's 6'4 to 6'6, 265 to 285. That's it just mm – -hmm. that's where we're at. So we got some really good athleticism. Some guys are showing some good upside. Um, it's going to be fun to watch, I think, but I think we need one more guy in there to plug up holes in the middle, short yardage guy. You guys, I, you, you, you guys got a lot of air time – this week on Inside Training Camp on NFL Network, they they had cameras and 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 hosts out in in Cincinnati, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, as as far as you know, being four teams from the division making a uh, uh, top twelve defensive, um, the AFC North plays the NFC South this season, um, and the AFC North is going to be heavy on the run game. Uh, NFC South isn't the strongest of defense uh, uh, divisions. Um, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. I think you might be able to just, you know, have some have some slug fest in there, and you know, you build up the, you know, and just make the numbers look look a certain way. I think it's possible you might, you know, if if not top twelve, top fifteen, three three, all the whole division we, in the top half of the uh, top half of the league. We 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 play the. NFC South and the AFC East. So it's possible. <laughs> yeah, so we get the Jets, 
We get uh, who else in the East? Buffalo, Dolphins, Dolphins, Buffalo, and Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Dolphins uh, is a wild card. I don't know what to expect from their offense. I don't know what to expect. We, we we pay we play them early on a Thursday night game, uh, September 29th. Um, I know that date because I'm going to that game, and it's the uh, it's the rollout of our white. Uh, jerseys with the white helmets. I like that look, man. That's yeah. slick. But hey, so we're gonna start to wrap up because we we've been going over for about seven or eight minutes the past few weeks. So I'm gonna ask you guys a few questions just to kind of close it out. Give me your takes. First of all, we'll start with Kathy Ford's comment. Uh, she said she said she hopes hope you all have the money on the over under. I believe the over under she's talking about. Vegas has the over under for the Steelers is seven point five. Was that an over or under for the Steelers? Win loss, seven point five. Wins, wins, um, wins, wins. Seven point five. Go over. I'm, I'm tapping the over on that. Just again, you just you just explained it perfectly. Uh, play the NMC South, AFC East. You got the Cleveland is probably going to be laying laying on their backs. You know, by the time you see them, uh, hit the over. Don't do not bet it. Take it from me, somebody who's done it. Don't bet against Tomlin. And those Don't. right. And those and those, those those other two games we play, we play our division games. We play the NFC South, the AFC East. We play the Philadelphia Eagles is our extra game against the NFC. And we play uh Indianapolis Colts. That's an easy that is an easy over. Seven and a half with the, the uh Tomlin's record as it is. Uh yeah. Uh, hit the over. Seven and a half. <laughs> That's easy. That's easy Christmas money. <laughs> what do you think, B Dirt? I got you at eight wins on December eighteenth. I take the over. December eighteenth. That's two weeks. That's the out. Panthers in okay. Carolina. That's the eighth win. Yeah. So if so if that's the eighth win, we probably got three or four games left. We got but, three left. And it's that's the Raiders. That's the Steelers Ravens and Browns. And Browns. And you got to at least win one of those. So if, if we're if we're eight wins at Carolina, we're 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 I think you're fighting, not we're, we're fighting for a wild card. Yep. Because if, we, think, get, if, if we, we went out three more, that that's eleven and six. I think you'll go nine and seven. I wouldn't be surprised at ten and seven or nine and eight. Excuse me. I wouldn't be surprised at ten and seven. I I think eleven and six would be a great year. Yeah, eleven and six is. Uh, I think if you're if you're eleven and six, I think Tomlin's no, coach of you. I, I, I was only saying that based off you said Carolina's Correct. eighth win, and if we can win three in a row to close the season, that would be eleven wins. Correct. And I, and I'm saying if you go eleven and six, I think Tomlin wins coach of the year. Let us not forget Trubisky's the quarterback. Um, let, <laughs> let's. That's my um, point. If you go eleven and six with Mitch Trubisky, you're the coach well, he of the won, year. He won. He, he won eight games with Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph. Jesus, he, Tom hit the over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that man, that man's a miracle worker. But eleven wins is it's a bit much. Uh, I, I definitely think eight wins is a is, is an easy 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 thing to bet on. Um, maybe I, I think nine, like you said, nine and uh, nine and eight. That's pretty. That's pretty much. That's pretty much uh, uh, fair. Maybe so, ten. You know, because things, because things, things, anything happens on Sunday. But I think nine and eight is is a fair uh, estimate for the uh, for the Steelers. So in my DraftKings notes here, I got don't bet against Tomlin or Tom Brady. Got it. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. That's all. And then you know, throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> Just those are two rules. <laughs> Okay. Um, let's see. What else do I have here? I had. Uh... Okay, B Dirt. Real quick, man. We got five minutes. Um, who, 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 who are the last? Who are the last two people fighting for for a spot on the fifty three for the Bengals? Like who's who? Who's somebody that that was on the team last year that might not make it this year? That might be easier to answer the question. Well. Hmm. Real quick, beater. Man, you know that ain't mine. Yeah, I, but I, I, got, I, I got to so keep us under a certain time frame. I know, but it is this is my. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna preface it this, um, it, and, and we've kind of talked about this off 
air. If you're in, in 48 to 53 on the 50-man roster, all I care about is if you can make a special teams tackle. Um, so I, I think we've got a fourth wide receiver, uh, fifth wide receiver uh, option that might actually st- – uh, Stanley Morgan Jr., I think may take that spot. Um, do you know? Do, do you know Stanley Morgan Sr.? Do I know of him? Yeah. No. Great NFL career played for the New England Patriots back. That's what back, I thought, maybe. Back but before they were sure. great. He he played when Steve Grogan was the quarterback. Yeah, didn't the Bears beat the heck out of them in 85? Maybe they, they did. I don't know if Stanley Morgan was still playing then. If he did, he, that was like kind of it for him. I'm going world. back to the late 70s, early 80s. That was 85. But yeah, he was a great player for them, but never got any. Any any kind of notoriety thing because they they really sucked back then, you know. So you said you said the 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 last receiver receivers four and five. So yeah, you, and I, so so you guys are keeping five receivers, uh, possibly or an extra DB. So that's where I think it's going to come down to the six receiver and the last DB. Yeah, so I think the last DB, the last receiver spot is going to be kind of a tough one. Um, you know, we've got some questions on uh, kick return and punt return. Um, I, I, I mean, they've got Trey Flowers still in camp. Uh, you know, um, I don't think he's going to be with us. Um, That's a big name, but okay, you're cut off. Payday, what's up, man? Far as far so, as same, same question regarding the Ravens. Anybody that would that 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 was a player last year that might not make it this year. I don't know too much about, you know, players that were on the, on the roster last year that might make it. But we did speak about this earlier, about the uh, offensive depth that uh, the Ravens have. I'm going I'm to use air quotes for offensive depth. Um, so what's been com- what's the news been coming out of uh, out of Baltimore? And as as Baltimore's history has been the last decade or so. If they have a cut to make, it will be on the uh, offensive side. They will keep all their defensive guys on, and they if they have a, a, a you know decision to make whether who's going to going to cut, it's probably going to come off the uh, offensive side of the ball. They've got a lot of receivers they're looking at. So as of right now, guys like uh, Benjamin Victor, Devion uh, uh, Williams, they're uh, they got to put up a show up. Uh, those two, those are receivers. Um, both ben, are undrafted. Benjamin I, Victor was Ohio State. Yeah. Receiver. Yeah, I'm sure you know them, OSU. Um, <laughs> they they got to put up a show up because uh, uh, again, it's a crowded, it's a crowded receiver room, and Baltimore is a team that they, you know if they had to make a decision, we're gonna keep our defensive guys, uh, your receivers. We'll make do with what we got. So those two guys, they've been battling injuries. Uh, Davion, if I'm not mistaken, he just you know up and didn't show up for the uh, rookie uh, um, some some rookie meetings. So. Um, yeah, they've got they got something to prove. Those are two those are two names that they their jobs are there. There are jobs to be had on that team for uh, receivers. So and um so yeah, those are two names to watch as far as uh could make the squad, could not. Okay, real quick for me and the Steelers, I think it's going to come down to the receiver room here too. I mean, I think we have four four shoeing candidates. You got you got Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, George Pickens, Calvin Austin the third drafted this year. And then whether we keep five or six, I mean, Mr. Trubisky, and like the coaching staff really likes uh the guy. Um, man, why well, I forget his name from Memphis, played in Chicago, used to play Mr. Trubisky. Um, help me out, live chat. But yeah, that guy, Miles Boykin. And uh, Gunnar Olszewski, the the kick returner from New England. Uh, you got you got uh, two bones and three dogs right there. Anthony Miller's his name. Anthony Miller, Miles Boykin, and Gunnar Olszewski. You got those. You got those three fighting for two spots. I think we keep six receivers, so we got four shoe ins, and then like I said, we got we got two fighting. I mean, three fighting for two spots. I kind of like I kind of like Miles Boykin just because of the size, 6'4", 215 ish, ran a four four forty at Notre Dame. He was the big thing at Notre Dame before Chase Claypool. He was just older and you know, far as in years of 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 school. 
Um, they played together one year, I think. But I like and I like Anthony Miller too. He is he was a, a third round pick for the Bears. Four 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 Got speed. It. I Slide had down. no idea Anthony Miller was out there in your <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. He was hey. a, he was a Bears. Yeah, he, he was yeah. in Pittsburgh last year. He was Pittsburgh last year. Reference my comment. Who can make a tackle on special teams? Oh, my, if it's, that comes down to that, it's Miles Boykin. That's who I would sign. But, if you're but, 48 to 53, you better be able to tackle somebody. But two, three, three for two spots. Gunnar Olszewski was an all – was an all pro kick returner for New England two years ago. And then you got Anthony Miller. So I, I like I like I like I like Miles Boykin just because of the pedigree. He was, I believe, a second round pick. Um Anthony Miller was a third round pick, and I think Gunnar Olszewski was an undrafted free agent. I mean, I don't know, but so if if somebody else can return kicks, then Gunner's the odd man out. If they need gun because that's special teams too. If Gunner is returning kicks, they keep him. But pedigrees you know, don't mean anything to me. I don't. You can be a full bred or a mutt as long as as long as you're a good dog. I don't care. That's true. That's true. But you know, it start is it starts with pedigree. If you if you're going if you if you're going to breed 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 your breed your dog with somebody, you're looking at pedigree. So you know, I just I, I just like the talent the, the available talent on the team. I'm not saying that that'll win out. A lot of times in football, it's the intangibles. You know, it's the the nuance of how you play and the things you do. But, hey, so we're going to get out of here, man. Uh, everybody in the live chat, everybody out there, thanks for watching us, man. We had a great show. Thanks, B, Dirt, and Pay for joining me once again, man. I love having you guys on. You guys really know your ball, AFC North football. Any 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 parting shots you guys want to say before we get out of here? Bet the over on, 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 on Pittsburgh. Bet the under. You, those are, you got excellent, uh, excellent odds right there. Go ahead, do it. You said bet, bet the over. You mean right? The over. Bet the over on Pittsburgh. Under on under on Cleve. Wow. Well, they 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 stopped taking bets on Cleveland, but that's another discussion. Because until the Deshaun Watson situation clears up, B. Right. Dirt, what's up with you, man? Uh, I uh, I know we're on a a Steelers forum, but i I've, I've got to take one second to acknowledge something and say thank you, Mike Brown. Uh, he talked today, and I think this had something to do with Jesse Bates' situation, how this all went down. He talked this past week about um, the most important thing in, fr- in their franchise right now and for the future is making sure that as soon as they can sign Joe Burrow to a long-term deal, that is their number one important thing. And he said along with that, he wants to keep Chase and uh, Higgins – and that receiving core together as well. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Okay. Well, there it is. Hey, thank you guys for joining us. Hey, um, what's the name there? The Cuda, the Cuda, the Cuda 70. We don't want to see Benny Snell back there, bro. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back next week. Um, BTSC, you know, check out all the podcasts later on the day, the Steelers Q and a tomorrow, the hangover tomorrow on the audio, you got Jeff Hartman's ride or die, check them all out, man. So I'm about to jump off here and go on to my know it all podcast for the next 45 minutes, just to talk some, some sports. You guys, if you're available, tune in to it to pay to be dirt. Thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace, Peace. guys. Rest in peace, Bill Russell. Oh, man, yeah, and William White, Ohio State, great from my hometown, played for the Detroit Lions, Kansas City Chiefs, and Atlanta Falcons when they went to the Super Bowl with the Dirty Birds. Died at 56 of, from ALS. So shout out to him and his family. Uh, God bless. Peace. Peace.